It's so easy for youth. It's a natural. You know, it's, I, I'm reminded of what Elder Bednar said in his talk at last conference. Uh, it, uh, he said, in speaking to the youth, he said, your fingers have been trained to text and tweet and accelerate in advance of the word work of the Lord, not just to communicate quickly with your friends. Mm -hmm. And so he says um, to uh, parents and adults, the youth can offer to older individuals who are uncomfortable with or intimidated by technology uh, the opportunity to help them. So he says to parents, you will also count your many blessings as young people devote more time to family history work and temple service and less time to video games, surfing mm -hmm. the internet, and just Facebooking <laughs> with, without a purpose. Yeah. So I want to give you an example because we talked about, um, uh, we visited many stakes where there's a lot of family history going on yeah. and many parts of the church. And here's an example of a young person. Uh, her name is Flannery Cash. She's Japanese Irish ancestry who kind of caught the bug thought the indexing app was kind of cool, and this is her story. Okay, let's watch that. I started helping my father with family history when I was about seven. He and I would look at um, documents that had been um, put onto the computer, like ship logs and things like that, and he would tell me, okay, hey, we're looking for last names like this. If you see anything like it or similar to it, let me know. And so I would help him look for names that way. And then this summer, um, I spent a good two or three hours each week one day, I missed, or uh, wasn't paying attention, did like seven hours. And um, I went to the temple twice this last month, but I was able to take um, the request to print out names, and I was able to print out 350 family card names. <laughs> I didn't mean to have that many. I just was working on it. And because, because I feel like if I'm here and I have free time, especially during the summer, it's not that much for me to give up a little bit of my time to look for names to take them to the temple because it's something they can't do. And I might as well be able to do it for them. Well, it's almost important to me because I love my family and I know how important it is to me to be able to be with my future spouse or with my parents and siblings. So I know that if I can do the work for someone else and help them out, I'm sure that would make them feel much better being able to be sealed to their families forever. And I, I, know I also feel like if we have to meet them someday, I would feel a lot better being able to come and tell them that, you know, I'm glad I was able to help you instead of like, I'm sorry, I just missed your name. I didn't get around to you. If you have someone who can tell you or you have somewhere written down family stories, you can you know, go back and look at things and find out, oh, hey, you know, Aunt Mary liked to lick her fingers after cooking because it was covered in flour too. I'm not just the only weird one. But so there's little things like that you can learn, but then also learn like where your family's from. From talking from my grandmother, finding out that I didn't know that I had family that went through things kind of like described in the Grapes of Wrath. Like I had family who went through things like that or who um, I had family, like just finding all these stories that you didn't know. Like you had family who had, were on opposite sides on the, uh, during the Civil War. But then also doing this, I, I think about a lot how I'm helping these people who are children of God and if they're children of God, then so am I. And if Heavenly Father is making this makes this so easy for us to do. If this is something really important to him, then it should be important to me too. And if he finds it important you know, to save every soul, because every soul is great in the sight of God, then that means mine is too. I'm, I'm also important. I'm a daughter of God. I know as we go to the temple and continue to work for them, for the people who have already passed on, that's a blessing to them since they physically can't do that themselves. And they're, they're dependent on us to do that. But then at the same time, going to the temple um, can help family on this side of the veil because I know that it brings happiness and peace into your home. I don't want to let them down by saying, oh, I decided to spend my time doing something else. And I easily could have been doing that and, and brought th them so much happiness, bringing them the gospel. And it's not that hard to do. That girl's heart has been turned. It's not that hard to do. I, from a 16-year-old girl. 16 years old. By the way, Central Illinois, that's her temple. Nauvoo. Nauvoo temple, it's her temple. Mm -hmm. Isn't that's, that amazing? That's fantastic. Now, 350 cards is extreme. <laughs> that puts her in the top 10% of the church. But it was so easy. Yeah, you're very moved right now. I can mm -hmm. see that you're very moved and the Spirit has, has, has touched you. Tell me what you're feeling. Well, I, 
Whenever I experience stories like this, I think about myself and for me, and just that moment, the veil is thin. Mm -hmm. And I have a sense of the eternities and a sense of what's beyond. It's like that moment in the temple if you've ever witnessed a ceiling or think of your own when you look in the mirrors on either side of the progeny past, of the ancestors past and the progeny to come. 